Hi, welcome back. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins, and this is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry. I appreciate you coming back and watching our video. I want you to know that we are going to approach this topic very carefully, and it's talking about remove the dross. I don't know what it was before I heard it either, but we're going to talk about it. This is Kingdom of Heaven Ministries. This is Kingdom of Heaven Series talking about God and what he requires his church. You're a believer, you're born again, you're named the name of the Lord, you accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, well, this message is for you, for the church. Remove the dross. So if you don't know what dross is, I'm gonna give you a definition. Shortly, we'll open in prayer and invite the Holy Spirit to help us understand. You and me both are gonna learn about the dross and he wants us to remove it. Why don't we pray? Our Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this word today. God, we're going to take our time. We're going to wait for your Holy Spirit to teach us, to minister us, to help us become more like Christ. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for each and every listener. Meet every need. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. All right. Well, welcome back. I'm hoping you're enjoying yourself. I'm hoping you're safe wherever you are. I'm hoping that God is meeting every need that you have. We're going to begin with the scripture from Ezekiel 36, 25 to verse 27. Ezekiel is the Old Testament, so I'm going to read it to you from the Old Testament. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. I'm going to go really slow, okay? Really slow. Remember, the topic is remove the dross, and God is talking to you and to me. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a new heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. Thus saith the Lord, amen. Amen, that's from Ezekiel, Old Testament. Isn't that an interesting verse that God is willing to do for us? Put his spirit in us, take out our stony hearts and give us a heart of flesh. God is going to wash us, cleanse us, prepare us, live in us, and then invites us into his kingdom. So that means there's something God is doing, but what's our role? What's our part? God seems to lay out what he's going to do, but what is our role in all of this? What do we supposed to do? Well, that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to take my time, read scriptures to you. But let's first look at the meaning of dross. And this is from the dictionary, dross. Impurities within the silver, before silver is made, in the, in the, um, in the, in the rock of silver, it's called ore. And in the ore, there are impurities, other metals within a metal. In order to get that metal out, we begin by heating it up and taking off the dross. The dross is the skimming off the top you might say that once you heat it up the dross comes off and then there's other metals that come off until we are purely down to the pure silver okay melting fire separates the impurities to release the silver so the harder the silversmith makes the fire the more the dross comes off okay the scum it's called the extra material of metals melted off in the process of melting to reveal the silver that is called dross and i've never seen it before i've watched some videos i've never heard of it before except in the bible that god promises he's going to take the dross out of us well let's see what god wants to do number four my my definition is waste matter worthless matter separated from the separated through the heat so the hotter it is the fire is from the refiner's fire the hotter it is the more the impurities come off until he gets down to, to the silver and when he knows the silver is pure the writers say is when he can see his reflection in it 
Isn't that spiritual? Yes, it is. Dross is impure, useless material that comes to the surface once extreme heat is applied till the pure silver is basically what is left. Okay, that's the meaning of dross. Well, guess what? We as believers, we as Christians, we who name the name of the Lord, we who are followers of Christ, or they say born again, we who call upon the Lord as our Lord and Savior, and we believe in him, we have dross in our lives. We do. We have impurities in us. We do. We battle these impurities, envy, jealousy, malice, pride. Yes, we do. We have sin in our lives. We are prone to sin. And then the Bible says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And also, we have spots and wrinkles as the church. And he's coming for a pure bride. So, we're going to talk about the dross that's in our life. I have dross. You have dross as a believer. But God has a plan to rid us of that dross. Amen? So that we can be with him in eternity. All fresh and clean and in our, in our eternity clothes. All right. Let's go. Dross is the figurative speech for how we think about the church, how we think about us as believers. We are living in, are we living in our best selves, in our silver selves, as they say, or are we living in the cloud, in the cloudy, in the weaknesses, in the base of ourselves? And can we question, do we question God? God, do I have a pure heart? Am I doing things out of a pure heart? Or do I have some dross? you might say do i have some things that are lingering around my soul that i might not even notice i i, I might not even think is even bad i might even think that's in it's important but the refiner's fire is going to bring to surface those things that he sees are not necessary dross is what's not necessary to the silver dross does not help the silver at all it's in the way it's impurities their blockages their barriers to the silver so God has to remove those blockages, remove those barriers. If you feel like, God, you can talk to me, but I'm not always listening, that's a barrier. If you know that a word is telling you to do something, you go like, I'll get around to it. That's a barrier. That's dross in your life. So he wants to cleanse us from all impurities so that when we are with him, when we walk and talk and relate in this life, we are walking and talking as examples or children of the living God. Christ is our mirror. And if you can look in the mirror of Jesus and you don't see no dross, then the silver is ready for the vessel that God wants to work in. The silver is ready. But if you can look in the mind and you can look at Jesus and see that your life ain't quite right, you're not stepping to the plate, you're not walking in his goodness, then you know there's dross in your life and the silver to be a vessel in the house of God is not ready. So we're gonna talk about that, how this is lived out, what this means to me and the blessings that come with this. So don't leave, stay with me. We're gonna get through this together. I know I'm gonna be examined by God's word every single day. I know that nobody gets away from the refiner's fire. If God wants to use you, he wants to turn you into silver. So why don't we get started right now? What this means to me, to be cleansed, to be walking in the newness of Christ. Looking at my life daily, this is what it means. Can I look with sincerity? Am I walking in God's audiences? Or during the trials of my faith, am I keeping myself in the faith? Am I leaning to the left? Or am I leaning to the right? Am I staying in the path of righteousness? Am I have a tendency to, as they say, run off my mouth and tell you my thoughts and be angry at you? Jesus doesn't do that. Scripture says no guile was found in his mouth. So let's go to 1 Peter 1, 7 to 9. That's the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 1, 7 to 9. Let's see what it says. 1 Peter chapter 1. Trials. You know when trials come, how they make you feel. Trials will show you that your faith is genuine. That heat that he's going to apply to us, that heat that the refiner's fire applies to that rock, to that ore, to get that dross out, that's what this is talking about. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Hmm. 
though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Beloved, are you going to be that vessel? Are you going to be that shining silver piece that God is saying like, yeah, that's my vessel. That's the one that I cleaned and purged and the trials came and went. But she or he or they stayed faithful to the end. All right. You love him even though you have never seen him though you do not see him now you trust him and you will rejoice with a glorious express inexpressible joy the reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls that's a blessing we began with a blessing starting right off the salvation of your souls these are benefits of getting that dross out this is a promise of getting that dross out this is a a a a, a, a true this is truth, but the word promises you, if you get that dross out, you let those trials work the best in you, Paul says rejoice in these times. Don't be sad. I know the press is on. My God, the press is on in this world like I've never seen. Beside people, hurting people, the government is feeling like they're failing people, relatives are dying, situations are impossible, can't get back to work, you can't get enough hours, can't pay can't work on things that you wanted to miss your relatives oh my god this is a trial of our faith beloved this is the church this is your trial of your faith right now in believing god are you taking up arms or are you taking up your bible and reading it every day are you reading it to someone else to show them hey we are in the days that our trial is going to increase the pressure the refiner's fire is hot right now and are we gonna get through this in faith in Jesus? All right, let's continue. I'm gonna go really slow. I want you to understand what God is meaning for us, me and you both. The second one, examining my own attitudes, behaviors, and reactions. Do I represent self, the world, or do I represent Christ, the Holy Spirit, within me? Let's see, 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. Let's see what it says. Call to living holy. So think clearly and exercise self-control. Look forward to the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. But not without pressure, not without fire, not without trials. He's coming, but you and me as believers there's going to be the refinest fire. It's going to test us. Unbelievers are going to test us. Our situations are going to test us to see if we really have faith in the living God. Let's see. So you must live as God's obedient children. That's the first rule. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. That's two. Second rule. You didn't know any better before, but now you must be holy in everything. That's the third rule. Do just as God who chose you is holy. Be holy as he is holy. That's the fourth requirement. For the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. Six, listen. Jesus is holy. God is holy. He wants what kind of people around him? People full of dross? I don't think so. People full of the world? I don't think so. If Christ is holy, God is holy, he wants holy people. Does that make sense? Does that represent God? Yes, it does. And if you want to represent Christ, it's going to cost you something. The refinest fire wants to remove all that dross, all that non-necessary parts of the world that is still in us. I'm saying me, that God wants to remove that, but we're going to go through testing. We're going to see what we are made out of, as they say. Next verse, and remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. Amen. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time as foreigners in the land. Fear meaning respect and honor. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the, from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Jesus, the sinless spotless lamb of god 
God chose him as your ransom long before the world began, but he has now revealed to him, to you, these last days. These last days. There you go. So Christ, you have come to trust in God. You have been placed, has, and you have placed your faith in hope in God because he raised Jesus from the dead and gave him great glory. There you go. Now, let's think about this. Jesus died, rose again, to cleanse us from our sins, to us to not to go back into the world, to put on holiness like God does, to walk in the newness of Christ. These are the things he requires. Does that sound like a cakewalk? No. Does that sound like tribulations? Yes. Does that sound like refining fire? Yes. Does that sound like this? Some dross that you know that's got to go, some ways of the world? Yes. Some ways that we've been thinking and feeling and doing and treating people? Yes. That's what the fire is for. That's what the test of your faith is for, to get rid of those things. Envy, jealousy, malice, pride, all in my heart that my heart will abide. The songwriter said, root them out, get them gone. That's what this video is about. We're talking about remove the dross. We're talking about in times of temptation, in times of great tempt temptation that's coming on this world, testing to prove who you belong to. Oh, this is exciting. Let's go on to the next one. 1 Peter 1, 22 and 25. 1 Peter 1, 22 to 25. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth, right? So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Number seven, showing love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. Did you hear that, beloved? Your requirement to prove that there's no dross in you, are you loving your brother and sister? To prove that there's no dross in your mind, in your thinking, in your, uh, I don't like her. She never talks to me. She has nothing to do with me. I'm just, re I'm just rejecting whatever she said to me. And that's the pastor's wife you're talking about. No love the brothers and the sisters love them for you have been born again but not to a life that will quickly end your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of god and the scripture says people are like grass their beauty is like a flower in the field the grass withers and the flower fades but the word of the lord remains forever are you living in the word of god are you living by the word of God? Is your behavior tempered by the word of God? Are you walking in that word of God? Are you putting it on? Are you just saying, well, yeah, I understand it, and then go about your business? No. The scriptures requires us, but the word of God remains forever. Are you living walking? Not in the flesh. Not in your own ideas. Not in the old past self. Me neither. Are we walking in the newness of Christ? Have we got the dross out? And if not, this is what this video is about. Exposing it, admitting to it, confessing it. We're going to go on. We have more verses to read. Let's see. Do I love unconditionally? What this means to me? Do I love unconditionally or partiality? And love like Jesus did, still loves? 1 Peter 1, 22 to 25. Do I love unconditionally? Sometime, when I feel like it, once in a while, when I can get something from them, when it's good for me, when I want her to be my friend, when I want friends on Facebook, oh yeah, there's conditions. But the Bible says no. You must love one another deeply with all your heart, okay? With all our heart, not based on conditions. God doesn't love us on conditions. He loves us unconditionally, that's right. God loves us unconditionally. One more. Am I growing and making spiritual progress or become like lukewarm concerning his statues? Am I growing in his grace or am I walking in lukewarmness? Oh my goodness. Let's read Philippians chapter 4, 14, 15, and 16. We're going to go slow. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. I'm saying that too. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. Believers, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not received it. 
but I focused this on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the to run the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Jesus Christ is calling us. Let us who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree at some point, I believe that God will make it plain to you. We're not fighting, he says, but we must hold on to the progress we have already made. Beloved, children of God, those who walk not after the flesh, those who are born again, those who are called to the body of Christ, those who have saved and said they're living for Christ, this is for you today. Are you walking in Christ? Are you spiritually mature? Do you have dross? We're going to talk about removing the dross. One more. Have I asked God lately to search me? O oh God, and renew your spirit within me. Psalms 51.1 Create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Beloved, this is for you and this is for me. We're talking about remove the dross, Holy Spirit. Lead with us, guide us, beloved. Come on back, there's more. We're gonna get to how this lived out and the benefits and the promises. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkin. Shout it out to the Rooftops Ministry. Come on back. We're gonna tackle this topic, removing the dross. God help us all, in Jesus' name. I ask you, come on back, amen. Bye-bye.